festive environment. We all gather according to the church arrangement for us to celebrate the season of uh, the Advent, the incarnation of our Lord who came to save us, came to save us. And there is a mystery surrounding the, uh, the season. It's called the mystery of the image. We see that from the early intention of God when he created man, he said, he said, let's create man in my image, in my likeness. So you notice that when God created heaven, earth, the plants, the seeds, the, the, the whole thing, he just spoke these things to existence. But when he created man, he paused. And he created one man at a time. So when creating the, 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 the plant, it was like many plants. That's plant B, boom. A lot of plants. Stars, a lot of stars. But humans are different. When he created man, he said, I'm going to breathe. Personal image in this man. And when the, uh, the image started to fade away, he said, I'm going to come and restore that image again. And that's our celebration. We come here, the church understood the mystery of the image. So we come here and we jump. The more you understand, the more we jump. Saying, Lord, I'll be your image. Is this something even can think about? Becoming a new race? a new assembled people who are chosen to become like God. That's the mystery. So let's, I put together some of the scripture for us to just to go over quickly today, tonight, and see um, the message of, of God in the, in, the, in the Gospels and in the Epistles and from the Old to New Testament and about this mystery of the image. So from Genesis chapter 1 and 2, you see it, it says here, God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish and the sea and so on. And then God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So you could see that God's intention was to create a new create creation to his likeness, like him, to give him dominions. So the, the, the whole intention of our existence is to become in the image of God. That's the whole, the whole purpose of our creation, is to become the image of God. Heaven and earth will pass away, right? Jesus told us that. Heaven, earth, what, and all what's in them will pass away. But man is immortal. It's created to be like God. To be like God. Things are created in masses, but men were created one at a time. Very personal. With, with his breath, with his breath. It's a process of growth into that image. And you will see from um, the New Testament how this image, God is, is working on us. His work is not done. He's working on us to have this image in us. You see in Colossians, it says, he is the image, it's talking about Christ. 
He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. So Christ, just one. God wanted himself to be visible, so he got incarnate among us to see that image, so we become like him, to be unified in our nature. My little children in Galatians 4, he said, my little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed. Again, that's the image. Christ is formed in you. Uh, from 2 Corinthians, you see, but we all with unveiled face beholding as a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed or being transformed into that same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. We have been transformed into that image. In Romans, he talks about the image that whoever he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. To be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. In Ephesians, so St. Paul is stressing this point very much that we, we, he's talking about this new man. So we are created of two. The earthly put on a new man which was created according to God's image. Put on this new man which was created according to God's image in true righteousness and holiness in Ephesians. And in 1 Corinthians, he's talking about just as we have borne the image of the earth, earthly, the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the heavenly, the man of heaven. So we have the two, the old man and the new man, the earthly, and we also have the heavenly. But we know that when he is revealed, the St. John in his epistle, but we know when, that when he, Christ, is revealed, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. So the rich image of God, his image is very rich, has something unique in every one of us. When he creates every one of us, it's a personal creation. He does not create in masses. He said, this is my body, the church is my body. And each one of us will have peace of my character, a peace of me among all my church. So we all together make up his body, his image, the image of Christ. So in 1 Corinthians, it says, now you are the body of Christ and members individually. So we're created in the image of God, but each one of us has a feature. God's image is very rich. No one can have the whole image of God in one person. But we all together, like a puzzle, we put us together to become his body, his image. In Romans, it says, being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another individually members of one another. So we hear a lot about identity crisis and, 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 and the purpose in, li in life and, uh, and one of the root causes of all that, it goes back to this image that we're supposed to have. And we compensate this image by accomplishment, earthly accomplishment, some kind of uh, 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 a different type of identity in the world, material possessions, anything that can fulfill our image. But that's actually drive us away from God, from the, the main image that we are created from. And that's where frictions start to happen. Divisions start to happen. But if everyone is in touch with that special image of God in each one of us, it becomes very clear 
what we are called for. Someone from, uh, for, uh, when we read with the fathers, they experience this image of God by meeting somebody who has the image of God. You can tell. You could go, some, some of the, the, the monks, they travel, travel, so they can meet somebody who has the image of God. Because they don't need to speak. The image of God is radiant. Is, is, when, when, when someone is in the presence of God, or his image represented in someone, they just get that fire in them. And St. Anthony, people were visiting him from all over the place. They traveled just to look at his face. It's known about St. Moses, the strong of Musa. They said when people will look at his face, they weep and repent without telling them anything. Just by looking at him, he got the image, the mystery of the image. When we receive that image, we fulfill the purpose of our creation. God has a big dream for us. He did not create us just to come to church and become good people. That was a small dream. God's dream is so big. He said, I want you to be like me. I want to give you my image. That's the whole purpose of creation. And when we started to stray away, he said, you know what? I'm going to fix that. I'm going to make you my image. God is working on each one of us. And we will be his image. No doubt. We will be, each one of us, will have a special thing about him. And that's why we're here praising, celebrating, because we understand that God isn't <clears throat> working on that image. And if he, is, if he is working on that image, he will succeed. And when we receive that image, we start to see how far we are from all that. This is great. God's intention is great. God's plan is great. And it's very common when we start to get close to that image, with that mystery of that image, we feel how far, how bad we have done so far. We feel our guilt. <clears throat> but at the same time, we feel the attraction to God. Like the people who were looking at the strong of Amos. They feel they get convicted by their sins, but at the same time, they feel like, I want to be like that. I want to be, I, I, I be different. I don't want to live in sin anymore. Why? Because they got faced with the image of God. Fear was the result of losing that image. Any fear. So the more we grow into that image, we grow into that process, the more peace we get, the less fear. We lose that fear that entered our nature. We start to understand the meaning of many, many of the things, the cliches, the church cliche. Like he came and saved us. What's that mean? We say it a lot. He came and saved us. What does it mean? We start to understand, have a special meaning. So when we bow down and say, we worship you, Christ, with your good Father and the Holy Spirit, because you have come and saved us, it has a new meaning. Because that image is developing in me, saved me from my ego, saved me from my iniquities, from my defilement. 
many of the cliches start to vanish and becomes meaningful. This image will, will make us shake and change. Face to face with God's image will have this power to shake us in our inner being to say, I want to change. I don't want to be like this anymore. I want to understand more and more this image that God has planned for me, especially for every one of us. And this is not, it is not for special people, for anyone. If we are created in the image of God, then we are created of the image of God. We have that image of God, not of everything else, of anything else. We are created in his image. That's his word. That's his promise. Those are the verses we just read. We're going to be like him. So how God is forming his image in each one of us individually? God is working in us. In Ephesians, we see that he's like, for we are his workmanship, his piece of art created in Christ Jesus. Christ is creator and redeemer. So when we say he came and saved us, he's creating us anew. He's creating us again for good works. Till we come to the unity in Ephesians 2, uh, chapter 4, we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect or a complete, to a complete or a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's the promise. That's what he's working. That's his work in us, this workmanship, this piece of art that he's working on, each one of us. So when he's creating us, he's creating each individual of us. He breathed in Adam alone. He did not say, let it be humans. And all of a sudden, thousands of humans came up, like thousands of, or, or millions of stars, or he could have done that. No, he said, I'm going to create Adam. And with each son of Adam, he formed them individually. Give them a name. I know you by name, from the womb. That's God's creation of humans, one by one, individually. And we all together are collectively, we make up his big, huge, rich image. How to receive the image? It's during prayer. Remember Moses when he was going and meeting God? He came down with the image of God. Nobody could look even at him. He has to put a veil on, on his face because he was in the presence of God. We take each one of this quickly. I don't know how much we're doing time. We, we go through them very quick. So God's work during prayer, repentance, and communion. Like I said, when we are faced with all this, it, it, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Imagine you and me we become like God. It's, it's, it's even, nobody can even think about that big dream that God has for us. If I tell you, you know, think of an, in, 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 in Isaiah, it's like, uh, uh, do make a request that the highest request you could ever make. And he couldn't make any, any, any better request, any, any good request. So in Isaiah, God said, I will give you myself. I will be born for you. I will be unified with your nature. I will make a brand new nature, new creation. That's God and man together. So we take this through repentance. Very simple. He made it very simple. Prayer and communion. Through the, the, the continuous repentance, prayer and communion, we get this progressive image of God. 
You know, when you are, uh, sorry to use a, a technical example of, if you are downloading a picture, like a, a big size picture, it starts to, you see like the picture downloading, you see it's with the very resolution, it's very low resolution, until, you know, if you're on a slow connection, until the image starts to be clear, they call it prog progressive image, until the image become clear. That's, that's how the image of God through repentance, prayer, communion, get the image going, get that image, the special individual image for each one of us. No prayer life or sins, then no image. Tab, I have sins. What should I do? Repent. Repent. He said, if we, if we say we have no sins, we are liars. We don't have the truth. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us our sins and purify us. So, no prayer life, no repentance, then no image. If there's no image, there's no purpose in life, no identity. Because we're created for that image. So that lack of prayer and sin are our existential threat. And that's where we can understand when we say the wages of Sin is death, because God's image would be gone, death. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all defilement. And he made it extremely easy. He said, repent, pray, and I will imprint my image on you more and more. Eat. Who can eat? Who can drink? Everyone. So we can eat and drink that image. You abide in me and I in you. It's divine food. We come here, feed on divinity. Divine food for free. Can I ask you, can, can you go to uh, anywhere to get divine food? Who, food coming from heaven, not from earth? Where can you get that? How much you want to pay for it? So you, here, on our altar, divine foods, paid <coughs> for free. Just repent. Come, eat. Get the image going. How to receive the image? Number two, obedience. We know that <clears throat> when Adam was created, he has a free will. But that free will wasn't sanctified. And he had a choice. He has commandments. Tree of life, choose life or choose death. Knowledge of good and evil. Because he has a free will and because he has many enemies, one of the enemies came and, you know, tricked him. So the image fall, fell. Now, Adam and a savior, they're sanctified will, free will, but sanctified. We're united. Jesus came and said, not, not my will, but your will. Now we have a free will, but sanctified. Better than what Adam had. And the image starts to get restored. So the, through the continuous obedience to the will of God, living in the plan of God, in Revelation 12, I think, there were, said there's a book of, of life and there's many books that are going to open. Those books are the books of God's plan for us, our, what, how we have done. All our, the plan of God, if we are living in the will of God, those will be great books. 
And in in, in few minutes, we're going to have uh, this hymn, We Follow You With All Our Hearts. The will, following the will of God. We follow you with all our hearts, and we fear you. And we seek your face, O God, do not forsake us. Do not forget the covenant which you have made with our father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What was the covenant? What was the promise for Abraham? That's, I will be incarnate. I will come and save you. I will come. That's the covenant. Do not forget this covenant to give us yourself, to give us your image. Lastly, the suffering. This is the highest level of fellowship with God. If he give us his cross to share. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. And then someone who experienced the beauty of that cross, he said, I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I remember Abu Nabshoi, I heard Abu Nabshoi Kamel story about him that somebody was saying that, why you suffer Abu Nabshoi? You're a good man. And he said, this is one thorn that he took from his head and put it in mine. This is very precious. He doesn't give it to anyone. And he gave it to me. I'm very happy to have it. He can shape his image through some suffering, some glorious suffering. Whoever experienced it, he said, it doesn't even compare with the glory. There's hidden mystery, hidden glory within that suffering. May God give us all to start to get in the spirit of repentance and put our eyes on that image so God can form his very special image for each one of us through following his plan, obedience, 100% obedience, following his plan, his dream, because it's the best dream ever we could ever imagine. To have his image in us to, his, to him glory forever and ever. Amen.